Oh, it was too short a summer. But we got a lot of a lot of accomplished this summer, which we really, with our schedule, needed to do. Uh, we did less individual work and asked the players, after we did our individual work, to do it on their own so we could try to work as a team on a, a new style of play for us. Um, something's going to take a little time to get used to, but the guys have done a fantastic job. I, I've got absolutely zero complaints. Uh, I've said this many times that last year was reminding me of my 87 Providence team in terms of attitude, um, and this year's even better. I, I don't think I've had as much fun coaching at any period of my life than the last two years, and it's been because of the attitude of the young men that we're coaching. So we're, we're really pumped up. We're excited to see what tomorrow will bring. Uh, we're going to try to balance the team so it's uh, fairly equal. Um, Mango has not practiced, but he is working out, doing agility. We've gone very slow with him to make sure he's totally confident and um, feels good about playing uh, mentally because you come off an injury like that. But sometime next week he'll probably start participating in practice, and it'll take him two or three weeks to get back in the groove, and uh, we'll be at full strength. Questions? Can you give us a hint what this new style of play might be? I shouldn't say new style. It's just that we're, we're going – we've confused a lot of people with our defense playing matchup zone, and uh, we probably have scrapped that. We're playing 95% um, man-to-man. Uh, it's much more – the pressure that we're putting on, on ourselves right now is much more up-tempo in terms of the defensive pressure. Um, we feel we have a deep bench, good shot blocking, so we're, we're utilizing that more, um, and the tempo will be much more up-tempo, even though we've always been an up-tempo team. Did Gang make the progress in the offseason that you expected to? He did. Well, he's got to be one of the scorers on the team. We've got obviously we only have one person averaging nine points per game. We don't have a double figure returning, so he's got to give us a lot of points and you know get us Damian Lee's uh, along with VJ King uh, make up for Damian Lee's points. Rick, was it was it the parts that you have on this team that, that said okay, you got to go more man to man than, than try the matchup zone? I just think we're in you know there's a lot of strengths to this ball club. One of the weaknesses, they're inexperienced in a lot of areas. A lot of, you have many players who had a role to play last year, trying to fit in as young players, and now they have to be in a starring role. So rather than try to teach that um, and then hopefully be ready sometime around Christmas, we want to be ready. We, have, we, we did something last year that we've not done. We took all our non-conference opponents, and I'm not talking about Purdue or Kentucky or Indiana. I'm talking about uh, William and Mary in Evansville and Long Beach State. We said uh, they had to have three starters back, top uh, 75 to 80 RPI. So we realized we play Evansville won, I believe, 25 games last year. We have to be ready right away. So the less you have to teach in terms of defense, the better off we'll be. Honest is honest and Matza, it's been a toss up. That's a, the only thing that concerns me. I don't know if, if our bench is that deep. One day Mats looks better, one day Honest looks better, another day VJ looks better, another day Dang looks better. So it's um, Ray and Jalen. Jalen looks better one day and then Ray looks better the next day. So I'm hoping that's just good depth. Uh, but nobody's really stuck out, with the exception probably of Donovan Mitchell at his position and, and Quentin Snyder at his position. And Donovan, Donovan took off, and you, you won't recognize him. Um, I, couldn't, I, t I mentioned it last year. I couldn't figure out why he was getting beat so much defensively, even though he is a low-body fat guy. I just felt 213 pounds for a 6'2 guard is way too heavy. I didn't realize he was 213 because he was low-body fat. But now he's at 195. And, you know, when you take off 18 pounds, that's going to make you a lot quicker and much more athletic. And he looks terrific. Coach, this team is extremely tall and long, especially out on the wing and down low. How does that help you defensively? Well, I think it, it, 
Also, a man defense is a lot different. We have two man defenses we're working on. I think what you'll see tomorrow is a lot of turnovers, not because of poor offense, but because we are really in the mode. Everything we do is about steals. And I think you'll see a lot of steals, but also a lot of turnovers because it's been happening that way in practice from good defense. VJ King, say it again. Oh, he does like dang. He puts it on the floor, shoots it, scores, quick, jumps well, good athlete, 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, um, him and dang, it's very close in practice. And, but, you know, we've toyed with playing VJ a little at two and dang a little at two and let, playing them together. We won't do that tomorrow, but we, we've toyed with that as well. So given the even, evenness at a lot of positions, how competitive has practice been so far? It's very competitive. Um, and when we make the teams even, uh, tomorrow the red team would be op opposite Quinton would be the red team and I, I would be very surprised if the red team didn't beat uh, the white or black team, whatever uniforms they're wearing. How much has Quentin kind of changed your expectations, your initial expectations? How has he progressed? Very steady, very crafty, shooting the ball much better. I think that's the one thing that sticks out is how much better we shoot the basketball. And Q is part of that equation. He shoots it much better than he did last year. Like all the guys, Donovan, Dang, Q, they all came in with line drive shots. They needed strength, repetition, um, repeating a good shot with Ock. Like right now, we're working on that with Tony Hicks. He's, he's the only line drive shooter we have right now, so we're working on getting his Ock up as well. It just takes time. Is he your backup point guard? Um, he'll probably be the first sub off the bench, but he's the most athletic guard we have in terms of speed and, you know, he's got Russ Smith type of speed. I think Quentin, he leads a different way, but, you know, he's, he's a quiet leader, but everybody has great confidence in him. Stronger, um, he's stronger, he's good scorer, shoots it real well. Um, you know, I, like again, I, I'm David Levitt just looks terrific. Um, you know, we need to play against somebody other than ourselves to really judge, but I think tomorrow uh, you, we won't have an, not to say that Bellman or, or um, Kentucky Wesleyan, a competition will be really strong tomorrow playing against each other. We're very deep, and we're. Coach, it looks like Mats has lost some weight. Uh, how is he progressing this season? He's lost weight. Uh, yeah, it looks like he's uh, 10 pounds lighter, at least on the uh, roster. He was two, listed at 250 last year, but 240. You know, I think he broke off with his girlfriend. Maybe that did it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I, 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 I haven't noticed a weight loss with him, to be honest with you. This may be. Um, Kenny's clerical error, I don't know. I think that is the biggest. I think there's two or three things that are very concerning for me. Is One, where the point's going to come from. Um, that doesn't bother me a whole lot. Uh, but the schedule bothers me. The schedule is the toughest schedule that I have faced as a basketball coach since being in this business. And... Not to make any excuses, we thought Shinano Onowaka was coming back. But that's not a big deal to us because we've got three centers, potentially four, because Ray can definitely play there as well. It's just a matter of getting the guys to know it right away. We've never been a great team in November. And we've got to be, we, we could lose to any of those three or four first opponents if, if we're not really good at that point in time. It's not. We have put it behind us. So it's not? I just said it's not an issue. That's the best way I can answer It's not. We haven't talked about it with the team. We haven't. What led you to believe that Nadu might be coming back? You mentioned that a minute ago. Well, I think, I think he had a good year. Um, he wasn't a guaranteed first-round draft pick, so that's pretty much why. 
but we're very happy and excited for him as he signed a three year like Montrez, he signed a three year guaranteed contract. And that's very exciting for a second round pick. How much has Ray improved? He showed so many flashes. Ray and Jalen are both terrific and the thing that's exciting about both of those guys is so different. Ray is his hands, his defensive wingspan, uh, some of the things he does, he just amazes you sometimes. He's not real consistent at it. Jalen's a much better rebounder. Ray's a much better defensive player. Um, so they bring two different things to the table. I, I'd be guessing I really would be. He hasn't, he hasn't played basketball since last December. That being said, we don't need Mango right now. We're really deep up front. In the backcourt, we're not quite as deep, but we're deep enough. He is. He's an emotional leader. But he's going to be ready, I think, in two or three weeks playing again. He won't be 100%, but by the time we go to Atlantis, he will be. Talk about the team not being very good in November. Are you comparing it to how it is in March or how other teams are? It's just that some of the things that we were teaching – really takes a lot of time to teach. And it takes games to get it under their belt, and uh, especially with the matchup zone. It's, it's very complicated. It takes time. Uh, offensively, it takes time as well to do some of the things we're doing. We're, do, we're running a lot of different things offensively that you'll see tomorrow as well. Um, and I haven't seen the offenses that we're running in a long time. So it's, it's almost like pure motion. And... Um, very few teams run pure motion today. It'll be be fun to watch. Are you likely to implement the matchup zone later in the season? Or is I don't. Th we'll play some zone, but it won't be a matchup zone. It'll be more like you see with Syracuse. But it won't be too much zone. You brought those guys in last year, and they were like instant leadership, outgoing, and talked a lot. Where do you feel that the guys you have in leadership spots on this team, are you pretty comfortable with them? Yeah, Mango, uh, Mango Q. Uh, Donovan uh, are all terrific leaders. But with this team, like I said, it's they're very unique. I think you guys covered them last year, so you know how special they are as young men. This is not the norm. These guys are not the norm. When I travel around and you look at the young culture today, it's, it's not like these guys. And probably, uh, I mean, I hope going forward I'll, I'll get teams like this again. But these guys are very, very unique. They're not, not your norm today. And uh, you'll, when you go out there and meet them, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. Well, I have an idea where they're going to come from. But, you know, when he, like I said, Quinton's averaged nine points a game and Dang and all the rest of the guys. I, I think Dang's going to score a lot of points. I think Donovan's going to score points. I think Tony Hicks will get some points. I think Quentin Snyder will get points. I think our front court will, will score by committee. Um, I think you'll see a lot of players uh, step up and score points. They're very capable of doing that. But it's not proven yet. This is just um, an optimistic coach. <laughs> what led you to the idea of running more of a pure motion offense? Was it just the skill set of your players? I think it was my experience coaching Puerto Rico and coaching um, FIBA basketball. I really l enjoyed that, like what they did. Now, that takes a little time too, Pat. I mean, it's because you are going to see a lot of turnovers because our, our focus on steals is just over the top. That being said, you know, sometimes when you have the ball in the hands of the point guard, you don't turn it over quite as much. When you've got the ball in the hands of your fours and fives, just as much as your one, twos, and threes, it's dangerous. But we, we've worked very hard on it. And, um, you know, you'll see Ray and Jalen be careless because of the amount of pressure we put on them and on us. Mats is a, he's the new Dirk Nowitzki, so that won't happen. <laughs> I am kidding with that statement. <laughs> The thing I'm most concerned about tomorrow is can they get – there's no front court subs. It's very difficult getting through practice. Mats and Anis, Ray and Jalen play almost the entire practice, full ball for two hours and 20 minutes without a break. And that's tough. So tomorrow they'll play a full game uh, pretty much without a break. Now, we can – sometimes we use Dwayne Sutton at the four spot, and uh, it gives them a break a little bit. So tomorrow we're going to play a full game – Pressing most of the game, full ball motion. Um, you know, UB Brown used to tell me 
the, when I first broke into the pro business that the Denver Nuggets, who averaged almost 120 points per game, he said it's, it's going to hurt you defensively because motion wears, people, wears your team out offensively. And so we, we believe we'll be in great shape uh, so it won't bother us. But tomorrow it will bother us because there'll be, very, there'll be no breaks for a few of the guys. You talked about the difficulty of the schedule. With that in mind, especially with the conference slate, how important is it to, to put some challenges in that non-conference portion of your schedule? We didn't need to do it because we, we didn't expect the conference to give us this type of schedule. You know, if you look at, for some reason, uh, there's a very, very different between North Carolina, Louisville, than say Notre Dame and Boston College. You know, I don't know whether the, I didn't know the ACC was such a Catholic league that they give they give uh, rights, uh, special rights to the Catholics. But if you look at their schedule and look at like North Carolina and Louisville and Duke, it's a lot different. Um, but obviously, the Catholics are closer to heaven than we are, so it's different. <laughs> Now, but you look at, in a serious vein, you look at, we're playing Virginia twice. Uh, they're a top 20 team. Pittsburgh, I just spoke to their coach in the recruiting trails. He's in, so excited about his team with four uh, starters back who are seniors. Um, we have Syracuse, who Jim Beheim said this is the best team he's had in five or six years. We play them twice. And who's the other, other one? Notre Dame, with all, they're a top 20 team as well. Um, so it's, um, it's different. It's, it's unique. And, I think, look, it, it's no mystery. We've been the number one TV market for the NBA draft as well as college basketball now for probably eight to ten years. So there's a reason why our conference schedule is tougher than a lot of people because um, it's the TV market. TV dictates about 60, 70 percent of our schedule. They tell the conference uh, who they want on TV, and that's the type of schedule you get. So it surprised me a little bit because generally I was used to the Big East where you, when you do have the uh, double games, it's you play, you break it in thirds and you play one, one team at the top third twice, then the middle division twice and then the lower division. The ACC doesn't do it that way. So we've got to be ready and that's, it's a great schedule, great for the fans, great for the players, uh, great for you all who cover it and it'll be very exciting. How would you compare the quality of the league to the best years of the Big East? Well, a lot of people I've spoken to in your business and people I respect think it's exactly like that. We, they think we're a 10-11 team bid league. It looks that way on paper as you got six teams, I think, ranked in the top 25. And then you have also a lot of teams with a lot of players back. So it looks that way, but we still have to play the games to determine that. Yeah. You know, I've, I've always been very, very lucky with walk-ons, you know, from, from Kyle Couric, who, who originally came in here as a walk-on, uh, to Tim Henderson, going back to even Kentucky, Anthony Epps. You know, it's, we've had guys that determined whether we were going to go to a Final Four or not. They develop into scholarship players, and Levich is one of those type of basketball players. I just think they're all going to play equal minutes. So by playing equal minutes, you know, I think they're all going to. And they're going to they're want to come out of the game. You know, I, the pace we're going to be playing at, they're, they're going to be very excited to come out and get a break. Rick, if your players came to you and said they wanted to make a statement of any kind of national anthem, what would be your... We discussed that there'll be no statements being made. You had that discussion with them already? I told them if they, if, in anything, and I'm not just talking about the injustices of, um, of um, an innocent person being killed. I told them any, anything that's bothering them socially in life, to come up here just like I am right now and state your case. It's, uh, it's a free country. You just get up there and you just say, say your piece. It'll go national. And um, if there's something bothering you socially, go ahead and say it. Get up there and say it. I think he's ready to contribute right away. When you play against Dang Adele each day and you more than hold your own and some days get the better better of him, you're ready to play. Dang? 
It's tough to tell because VJ is pretty much on the same level. It's really tough to tell, but I, I love them both. You know, they both terrific. Well, we can play Tony there. We can play Ryan there. We can play Donovan there. So, not really. Coach, you talked about the teams all season with you. This time of the year, do you feel like, okay, let's just get going again? Because you've been practicing a long time. You've been doing a lot on the recruiting show. You had a couple weddings this summer. So, I mean, it's been a... We haven't been practicing that long because we, we practiced double sessions last Monday, Tuesday. And then we practiced yesterday. So, we haven't been going at it that long. But it is, you know, for me personally... It's about as much fun as I've had in a long, long time the last two years. You know, when you're, when you're coaching 40-some-odd years and you just can't wait to get to work, it's only because of these guys. They just make it – It's to call this job work would be an injustice, and it's only because of the personality of these players. And you'll witness it. It's just an incredible thing I see um, every day. Um, it's fun. The laughter is there. The guys are just – they just want to get better. They want to pay attention to every little thing that's being said. And it doesn't happen that way all the time. It's just uh, we're very lucky here right now. And we've been on a great run. The last six years have been a great run. Um, and we don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't want to take a step back. So we want to stay with the same six years. Now, last year we didn't compete in the tournament, but it was still a great season. Uh, real appreciative to Damian and Trey and what they brought in one year. And I think Tony... Tony Hicks is going to have a terrific season as well. What did you have to um, work on with Dane? I mean, I know you said you left up to their individual workouts, but what did you do? Like the number one thing we worked on with, with Dang and Donovan was their arc. We call it Steph Curry arc. If we can get anything close to that, we're real excited. The only one that is close to that type of arc is Ryan McMahon with shooting the ball. But the rest, their arc has improved so much. Their confidence has improved so much. They have shot the ball thousands and thousands of times working on this arc, and they're very, very dedicated basketball players. They're gym rats. They love the game. They love the gym. Did, did the game seem a little tentative uh, down, down the stretch? I mean, he came back from the injury, but do you Well, the first few practices, it only took one day, first few practices. We, we put the guys on, I don't, I don't care for yelling at them anymore, so I just send them on the treadmill for a minute, which is better in that thing for, than, than being yelled at. So I just said, just go. And I, I've sent Dang to the treadmill the first first two practices about 12 times when he didn't take an open three and ball faked and tried to get a two. And I said, you don't want to shoot it, go, just run. And uh, it only lasted one day, which is a good thing. Is there a, uh, a real disadvantage to your schedule? I mean, it's a 68-team tournament, ranked very high, you've had a lot of success. What, what's the real impact? You know, we're going to have some losses this year that um, could come, and we won't panic with the losses. Uh, we're going to have a – we're going to be on a heck of a journey. Sometimes the journey starts, um, you know, with one game like the end of November and then starts mid-December, and then the journey really starts – it's going to start mid-November this time for good. It won't be an easy game for us. Um, the fans may not understand how good – William and Mary or Long Beach State or Evansville will be, but we we understand, and you do, because you, you, you're going to know this thought is returning. Um, and then, obviously, you have the Battle of Atlantis. You have Purdue, who's ranked very high. Indiana's ranked very high. Kentucky's ranked very high. Then you're at Notre Dame. So it's, it's, it's going to be a great schedule, and we just have to be ready for it. I want, I want it to be right away. I want to, I want to see a heck of a red-white scrimmage tomorrow. Like I said, I, I think because of our defense, the way we're playing, we'll, we'll have a lot of turnovers in the game. But it's, it's by design to steal the basketball and create turnovers. What's, uh, what's BJ's biggest area for improvement? Just getting used to the offenses and the defenses. Uh, he's um, a well-rounded basketball player, does a lot of different things. I think you'll... If you ask the players how impressed they are with him being a freshman, you wouldn't think he was a freshman. You mentioned moving on from the NCAA. What is your emotion moving on from that, getting past last year, and now a new year this season? Like I said, if it wasn't for the players, 
and the type of people they were last year as well as this year. Um, for anybody, anybody as passionate as me with the game, um, it really would have. It, it did bother me last year a great deal. What went on, uh, where it went on, even bothered me more. And uh, but I put it behind me, and uh, I'm moving forward. you and just kind of focus on this year's team and the run that you got to get once to once the season was over last year you, you talked like this team is, is laughing having a good time very loose how much does that help i didn't say very loose that's your words we were we have been laughing i have a lot of fun having a good time does, yeah. that, does that help though with the the bonding getting the the new faces in here and getting used to, to everything getting into the season it can't hurt you know like i said it's it's um I guess the players can answer that one better. They're a very close knit team. Do a lot of things together. One more for Coach. You had, you had said on I think it was John Rothstein's podcast that that you guys followed what Chuck Smart recommended. Is that why you're confident that nothing? Else happened? You know, I think <clears throat> once the uh, notice of allegations come out, um, then the school will comment on all that. We haven't even got to that point yet. <clears throat> Look, this is going to probably. I, I know you probably know it better than me. It's probably going to go to June or July before we resolve this. And that's probably a lot quicker than North Carolina and Syracuse you know, went through. So it's probably going to be June or July before we get <clears throat> closure on this. But as far as our basketball team is, we have full closure with this. Okay? Thank you.